After the war, the Deutsche Bundesbahn put immense efforts into the electrification of its main lines due to the countless advantages electric traction has. But when it comes to cross-border trains, the story is quite a bit more complicated. By the 1930s, electric traction had very much matured and modern locomotives for heavy goods and express trains were available. The easy handling, high efficiency of electric motors, as well as the time and weight savings in regard to not having to carry fuel were just some of the reasons electric networks began to spread at an increasingly fast pace. Despite the high upfront cost of new locomotives and the needed infrastructure. But until that point, electrified networks had always been just aisles and very limited in their expense. Quite naturally, this leads to different systems being used depending on which one was most suitable or economic for a given route. When these systems eventually started to merge, it brought with it the problem that the different systems just couldn't. And if one wasn't changed into the other, unlike steam or diesel locomotives, electric ones needed to be changed at the border station. While individual countries or regions eventually standardized on a singular system, this usually did not happen between different countries which for the railways in the Saarland created a special challenge. Due to its rich coal and iron industry, after the Second World War, France wanted to tie the Saarland closer to its own economy and therefore planned its electrification with 25 kV alternating current at a frequency of 50 Hz, the standard used in northern France. But history took a different turn and when in 1957 the Saarland became the 10th state of the Federal Republic of Germany. Its railways were now the responsibility of the Deutsche Bundesbahn, the Federal Railway of East Germany. And while the long-anticipated electrification finally did happen, it was now for Germany's standard of 15 kV alternating current at 16 and 2 thirds Hz, creating on the French border Germany's first direct contact to a different electrification system. To address this issue and simplify train operation, the Bundesbahn introduced in total four different dual system locomotives with the classes E320 and E344 starting in 1960. Externally, they look very similar to the standard electric E40, but are not considered standards, as the electric and partially even the mechanical part is very different. While being an important step forwards, these locomotives however prove troublesome and therefore unsuitable for serial production. Therefore, only a few years later, the Bundesbahn commissioned the locomotive industry once again to develop a small series of prototypes, including Germany's first four current locomotives. Ultimately nine were built, four dual system locomotives as class E310 and five four system locomotives E410. The later ones were built to two different electrical layouts and were supposed to be split into two different classes, E210 and E410. But during construction it was decided against that and the two machines planned as class E210 were delivered as E410-011 and E410-012, while the others were simply numbered from 001 to 003. The four system locomotives were delivered starting in 1966, with their simpler sisters following the year after. Mechanically and visually, they are all very similar, with the biggest difference being the number of pantographs, just two for the dual system locomotives. Characteristic for their appearance is the comparatively low body to comply with the smaller French loading gauge. While the locomotives are based on the standard class E10, hence the 10 in their names, one decade of progress means not a lot of that is visible in the final design. Together with the prototypes of the E03, there were indeed the first new electric developments since the standards and as such share some common traits. To be able to be used both with the direct as well as with alternating current, a lot of additional equipment was needed, resulting into additional weight. Therefore the body had to be a lightweight construction. Just like with the E03, it consists of a sturdy frame, with the superstructure being made from five aluminum segments, two for the caps permanently fixed to the frame and three covering the engine room, which are easy to remove and allow excellent access to all the machinery. Ease of maintenance was indeed one of the main goals with them and plenty of hardwaring parts were used as well. But unlike the E03, 
diamond-shaped pantographs were never an option, as there simply is not enough space available to fit four of them, and single-arm pantographs had to be used instead. But there is one other easy-to-spot difference between the two and four system locomotives. The later ones have their buffers and couplings directly fixed to the body, but the dual system locomotives are fitted with separate easily exchangeable buffer beams, increasing their overall length by 75 cm. This however is purely caused by them being delivered last and the general adoption of those buffer beams by the Bundesbahn and has nothing to do with their internals or intended service. This is underlined by all official documents incorrectly stating the same length over buffers for both classes. The four current locomotives E410 were intended to be compatible with all four systems commonly used in Europe and as such gained the nickname Europa Lok. And while at first it seems quite obvious a four system locomotive needs four pantographs, it is a bit more involved than that. We have to understand that it isn't always the current which makes a different pantograph necessary, but rather the different geometry of the overhead wire that comes with it. Both Northern France and Germany use alternating current which gets picked up by the two inner pantographs, which are present on the two system locomotives as well. Due to the smaller French loading gauge, however, the overhead wire moves only 40 cm from side to side rather than 80, making a narrower pantograph head towards cap 2 necessary to maintain enough clearance, while the pantograph towards cap 1 is equipped with a head suitable for Germany and Austria. The two outer pantographs used for the DC systems with 1.5 kV in the Netherlands and southern France and 3 kV in Belgium on the other hand are both identical as the difference in voltage is handled internally. But two of them are still necessary as the low voltage results into stronger currents creating a lot of heat between wire and head, especially during acceleration. This heat is reduced by distributing the flow of electricity to multiple contact points. So instead of just two, the DC pantographs have four contact strips each and during acceleration the second pantograph can be raised too. To increase the reach even further, the French pantograph could also be used for the DC system in Italy or be exchanged with one suitable for the Swiss overhead wire with internal switches doing everything else. And indeed, every pantograph could be used with every type of current to clear the line when the proper pantograph failed, but usually only with severe speed restrictions. Unfortunately, however, the E410 could never live up to its name. A regular service in Switzerland or Italy never happened, and even the service in Belgium and the Netherlands was cut short due to continued electrical problems under direct current. Since 1968 classified as 184.0 and 184.1 respectively, all five locomotives lost their DC equipment including pantographs in the 1970s, leaving them effectively as dual system locomotives like the sisters. And while the later ones eventually made it into serial production, the four system locomotives did not, with the first one being withdrawn already in 1980. But it wasn't until 2002 the last one would be out of service. And it is around that time, more than 35 years later, the now Deutsche Bahn AG finally acquired its first truly successful four current locomotives. But that is a different story. Enjoying this kind of content? Then make sure to subscribe and consider becoming a channel member to help me to create more videos like Contrian, Dave Heise, Blipschwip, K. Frankly and Lucas Ilskens are already doing. Or simply go and watch another video, like this one, which should be of special interest to you. See you there!